It really doesn't matter how many chords or melody writing techniques we know. If we can't find something interesting to write about, an idea or a thought or a feeling that we want to express, then the whole songwriting process comes to a grinding halt. And if you're someone who struggles to come up with new ideas or you find yourself stuck in a loop writing about the same things over and over again, this little trick I'm gonna show you today might be the answer to those problems. And what amazes me about this little technique is every time I do it, it never fails to produce results. I always end up with a whole heap of new and interesting ideas to work with. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a fun and exciting way to write songs, a way to generate and develop new and interesting song ideas, and all you'll need is a pack of cards. So we're going to use this standard pack of 52 playing cards to essentially generate a whole range of different song prompts that we can then use to start writing different kinds of songs. So let's dive right in by opening the deck, giving it a little shuffle. And I'm simply gonna pick a card from the middle. Six of hearts. Now, the way I like to do this game is to try and respond instinctively to the card as soon as I turn it over. So every playing card has two elements. We have the number and we have the suit. In this case, we have the number six and we have the suit of hearts. And it doesn't really matter which one we move towards first. What matters is that we move quickly through this process and instinctively and creatively through this process and then note down all the different ideas that come from this prompt. So whenever we have a heart suit, it leans us towards a love song or a song about romance. The number six then becomes interesting because our relationship with numbers is such that we can interpret them in so many different ways. And depending on how much you like playing with numbers will determine your appetite for this, this method. But for me, I look at the hearts, I look at the six, and one concept might be uh, a love song where you're saying something like, if I had six hearts, you'd break them all. You know. This idea of the broken heart is so common in love songs. But if we can flip it and find a different angle, such as, you know, if I had multiple hearts, you'd still break them all, that becomes interesting. So I'm going to write that one down. Uh, that also for me feels like it could be a chorus line. Just the nature of the phrasing. So one of the ways to really quickly generate lots of different ideas is to turn a card over and write down the first thought you have, the first idea that comes to mind in response to that card. If we do it again, let's just see what happens. Queen of clubs. Queen of clubs. Queen of clubs instantly makes me think of golf. And my grandmother loved golf. In fact, I think my grandfather loved golf. She played so she could hang out with him more in retirement. Thinking about the Queen of Clubs has got me thinking about my grandmother. And this is what's so powerful about this idea that it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be, the most obvious or literal response to the prompt. When you turn over a queen, um, one of the obvious thoughts you might have is royal family, something around the monarchy. And that could be an interesting story to write about, and we could certainly take it in that direction. But where I find this far more useful and, and more personal is when I use the prompt to take it in a unexpected direction or a direction that's less predictable. And in this case, the clubs relating to golf is fairly predictable in some ways, but the queen of clubs relating to my grandmother and her life and maybe her life at the end of her life, that feels like a personal story that I would be interested in writing. So we're always looking to respond to the prompt in, in a personally emotional way or in a way that feels emotionally relevant to us. Because if it feels emotionally relevant, then we've got a better chance of actually wanting to write the story. You know, that story about my grandmother is a story I would like to write. I could write about the royal family, but it doesn't feel as personal. It, it feels detached. It feels like something that's more of a research project. So in this case, I'm gonna write down Queen of Clubs and make a note about my grandmother and the latter part of her life. Let's try one more. Seven of spades. Spades. My dad was a builder um, for most of his life. And so whenever I see spades, I always think about him on the tools, on the building sites where I used to go and visit sometimes as a kid. And I'm thinking about the number seven as a, as a very lucky number. It's a number that's revered um, around the world in a lot of different cultures. 
putting those two numbers together, the spades representing my father in construction and instilling a very powerful work ethic, I guess, in me and my sisters, um, coupled with seven being a lucky number in lots of different cultures, a magical number, now gets me thinking that this could be a song about um, my appreciation of or how lucky I am to have had a, a parent who instilled a work ethic in me around hard work and labor and and you know being on the tools and using your hands to make things. Again, this is just a thought in response to the card. It doesn't feel very well formed and it's not meant to. It's meant to be just an initial idea, a spark of an idea. But if I write it down and I come back to it later, I'm going to check in and see how much energy I have around that idea and, and how much desire I have to develop it. But again, it feels personally relevant. It feels like something that is part of my life and a story that I might want to tell. And it's also an idea that I wouldn't have thought to write about had that card not have presented itself. So seven of spades. Now, one thing I really want to stress here is I'm not selecting a card, as in I'm not holding the cards this way and scanning through them and picking one that I like the look of. It's really important that we surprise ourselves. This technique works best when we, we hold the deck this way and then we pick a card at random. And it's also really important that the first card we get is the card we stick with, even if it's uncomfortable. And it will be uncomfortable. The first response is often one of discomfort because we look at it and we've got nothing that comes to mind. That feeling makes us want to then put the card back and find another one where it is easier to talk about or we do have a more obvious idea that comes to mind. But I'm going to challenge you to actually stay with the card that you pick and just sit with it for a moment because we're trying to strengthen these creativity muscles. We're trying to strengthen these idea generation muscles. And we can only do that if we don't let ourselves off the hook, if we don't just move on to the easier option. So sitting with the card and really interpreting what the numbers or the suit might mean, digging into your memories, playing around with some sensory language, whatever it is, you need to find a way to sit with it and see what emerges. So that's an example of how I would try and rapidly generate a few different ideas. Three very different song ideas there. And the real benefit of collecting lots of different song ideas is firstly, we don't get stuck writing the same kind of song. We don't get bored with our songwriting if we've got lots of different ideas on lots of different topics to choose from. The second reason it's great to have a pool of different song ideas to dip into is because on any given day, you can review the list of song ideas you have and see what resonates with you on that particular day. And so a really great practice is to spend a little bit of time every week collecting and generating new song ideas, documenting those ideas, and then finding other times throughout the week or the month to review those ideas and develop some of them, the ones that feel like they are ready to be developed. Because if we only collect and generate ideas and do nothing with them, this leads to another problem, which is we have books filled with potential songs, but we have very few songs that actually get developed and finished. And this leads to a lot of frustration. So now I want to show you another way of playing this game and really going deeper on each card, interrogating each card to extract more ideas and more potential directions that a song idea could take. And to do this effectively, I've created a little sequence that we're going to work through. And the first step in this sequence is to create a story. So let's start by picking a new card. The Two of Diamonds. Let's look at the Two of Diamonds and interpret this prompt just thinking about storytelling, creating different narratives. So diamonds can mean wealth. They can mean status. They are a symbol of class, are found in wedding rings. They can mean purity. They also have industrial applications in terms of cutting. They're hard. I think on the most scale of hardness, they're right up there around nine or 10. So these are the things that diamonds are associated with. If we then think about the number two, well, the number two lends itself obviously to a couple. So then we get to lean into marriage. But we could also take the idea of cutting and apply it to this idea of a marriage breakdown. So we could go marriage breakdown or relationship breakdown. We can also interpret the number two uh, lyrically, too much. If I'm playing around with hardness or purity or any of these things, 
or wealth. And then I'm taking the number two and I'm going to convert it into the word two as in too much, T-double-O. Now I'm thinking of too much wealth. The idea that there is too much wealth held by too few in the world. It could be too hard. Too hard. It could be a commentary or a story about struggle, challenge. Again, I'm not judging any of these yet. I'm just free flowing in my idea generation and trying to interpret the two and the diamond in as many ways as come to mind. And I started off with the list of words, you know, wealth, status, symbol of class, wedding rings, purity, those sorts of ideas. And now I'm moving more into little statements that flesh out the idea a little more. So those might be some ways we can interpret the two of diamonds from a story point of view. If we now look at the next step in this sequence, I'm going to look at form. And this is where the number really comes into play. So two as a form consideration might mean that I'm only going to have two sections in this song. And only two sections leads me to think of either verse and chorus, but more likely A-A-B-A, -A -A, where we have three A sections, uh, which are the verses and the refrain line will be contained within the verses. And then I've got a bridge coming in after the second verse. So that that might be the form that I choose because I want the song to only have two sections. Thinking about form through the lens of diamonds, I mean, diamonds are sharp. So maybe I'm thinking of a short, sharp form, something that isn't too long. Maybe I'm deliberately thinking about how to contain this song idea, something like two and a half minutes where the sections move quickly and, and it doesn't feel like it drags in any way. So short, sharp form might be a parameter that I put in place. Let's now look at rhythm. Two is a nice way to think about the subdivisions. So if I'm in 4-4, for example, instead I might think about being in 2-4, which is cut common time. I might also want to lean on structures of two rhythmically and melodically. So iambic pentameter, for example, is five sets of two. The I am is the two, da dum. So that may be a way that I structure the melody and perhaps the lyrics in this iambic pentameter kind of approach, or at least leaning on the couplets. That idea of couplets then leads us to rhyme scheme. And we may want to play with couplets in terms of our, our rhyme types and our rhyme schemes. What if we think about the two of diamonds in terms of chords? Well, one of the lovely things you can do is to take the number two and think of it as an extension for the chords. So instead of triads, we might be adding the two to create sus two chords, or we might be thinking in terms of the nine. So to demonstrate that, if I was thinking about the key of C, I might actually also uh, play around with a two chord vamp. So this song might be a two chord vamp to start with. Going from the one chord to the two chord in C. C to D minor. Or maybe a C add nine. Might be that. Or we might go to the D minor nine. So that might be nice. So to going from the C major to the D minor nine. The nine is the same as the two. And finally, we can think about melody through the lens of the card. And if we think about melody and take the number two, we might be thinking in terms of two note motifs. In the key of C, we might be doing this. Just toggling between two, two notes or two pairs of notes. We can also take the diamond and actually play with it visually. So if I literally look for a diamond shape on the C chord, a diamond shape that I can create using the notes of the C major scale, it might be that. And that might be the riff or the little bass line that I create for this song. So I'm being very literal here in, in taking the shape of the diamond and literally looking for a diamond shape in the scale. But again, it's just a different way into the songwriting process. It's a different way to interpret this set of information that we've been given with the Two of Diamonds card. 
One of the other major challenges of songwriting is knowing we can essentially write about anything. And this sometimes cripples us and stops us writing about anything because if the whole world is available, if we have all the choice, then it's really hard to make that choice. It's really hard to know where to start. And often we just don't start. We just leave the piece of paper blank. And so having a technique like this can help start to define some of the parameters. And as you look through a deck of cards and interpret these numbers, you see that, of course, we have odd numbers and even numbers. And this is significant for songwriters because our even numbers represent stable structures. 4-4 four, four is the most stable time signature we have, but generally any structures that are using even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, they're stable. Then we have the odd numbers. We have the threes, the fives, the sevens, the elevens, which is the ace. And so as you're going through this, you're either going to turn over a stable or an unstable number. And this takes the thought process in a particular direction. If we take a five, we might say, okay, great. I'm going to make that the time signature. I'm going to write in five, four. And five, four is an unstable time signature. And so that now dictates the theme or the type of song I want to create. If I'm going to set it in 5-4, it means I need to find a subject matter or a theme that is a little unstable, a little uncomfortable perhaps. It also might mean that we put five lines in the verses, again, destabilizing the structure. The number can be interpreted very literally and used very practically in the structure of your song because Songs and music are based on numbers. We have numbers everywhere in our structures. It's a very easy and often creative way to define the parameters. And then of course, we have the Royals. And so turning over one of those cards because they're picture cards, that gets the brain working in a whole different way as well. And depending on what kind of cards you have, the picture itself may inspire a particular thought. And what's beautiful about collecting and using different sets of playing cards is you see all the variations in the imagery. So look at the picture cards in your deck and see how you feel about the characters as they're being portrayed in that deck. So there you have the songwriting card trick that for me is one of the most creative and fun ways to generate song ideas. And I would love to know in the comments if any of you try this technique out what kind of ideas did it help you generate? Where did it take your thought process? And did it result in songs that otherwise wouldn't have been written? And this is the kind of thing we love to discuss with our growing community of songwriters. So if you're interested in joining that community with songwriters from around the world, check out the links below and hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks, bye.